Uh, today we're going to go over the Vintage Vibe full refurb kit. We're just going to give you some pointers on uh, installing various components in a logical order. Okay, so we're going to restore this Rhodes using the Vintage Vibe kit. And uh, any good Rhodes restoration starts at the key bed, and we're going to build up from there. So what we're going to do right now is just uh, get this harp out of the way. A note here is just for now, as we start disassembling, we're going to hold the settings of uh, where the harp is centered in relation to the dampers and hammers by leaving the uh, washers right on there. We'll just put this nut and bolt right back together and uh, get that out of the way. And when we go back and put the harp back on, this will be a good starting point. We're going to prepare the action for the Miracle Mod now. And what we're going to do before we even loosen any of the action components out of the case, we're going to pay attention to key height. First, we're going to get a couple of samples of dip. So let's go, for instance, to this C below middle C looks pretty low right now. And we're just going to kind of get a gauge on what the dip is at. Okay, we have, okay, we're just at three-eighths, and that's what we want to see. Um, generally speaking, uh, when we go to set the key height, Rhodes never really had a specification for this. So we have a criteria. We basically want to see that when the key is depressed, it does not make contact with the front rail punching there, or the felt. We don't want to see contact on that because that will impede stop lock. Now, if your key dip in this case was slightly shallow, then you can raise your height a little bit and you may get a little extra key dip out of it. Uh, if it was a little bit excessive, then lowering the key height can possibly limit your key dip a little bit. But there's another adjustment for that that we can get into. We're continuing to determine where we want our key height on this particular piano. Um, as I stated before, we just want to make sure that no matter where the key height is, that we're not contacting the front rail felt. And on this piano, we're going to go with uh, the low A here. First thing we want to do is square it. We want to make sure that that key is completely perpendicular, or I'm sorry, parallel to the key slip, and this area here would be considered the key slip. Okay, once you're satisfied with that, and I'm actually not sure because of, I can't see. We're now going to take a measurement. Now we're taking our ruler here and we're just going to the front rail. We're not going between the case to, uh, to the bottom of it. Just the front rail is good for now. And we're just going to mark this with a piece of tape. Okay, I'm going to double check that. And we're going to apply this to the highest note on the piano. And the reason we're doing this is it's uh, important to set your key height before you put your bump mod in. So that way, once all the keys are leveled, the bump is in the same location. So we got a little ways to go on this one to bring that up. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now we can proceed to take the key bed out of the case.
Next, we're going to want to remove the harp supports. Now we're going to remove the pedestal felt. Uh, for the sake of this video, we're going to do uh, just the high C and low A on this piano, uh, just to kind of show you how to set up the Miracle Mod. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. Now our kit comes with a bottle that you can use acetone to soak these felts and uh, thus remove them. Uh, another way to do it would be with steam. Um, in this case, we don't have a clothing iron here, uh, so we'll demonstrate with a soldering iron. But uh, a nice flat clothing iron actually works perfect. And this is just water, and we're just moistening the felt. And then you just apply heat to it. Now with a clothing iron, you'd be able to hit this surface all at once. In this case, just for the sake of demonstration, we're using the soldering iron. And that starts to lift it right off. So again, you'll get better results with uh, like your grandma's old iron. Or... We're now ready to locate the Miracle Mod bump onto the pedestal. Now this is why it was so important for us to determine the uh, key height, at least on the, the extreme treble and extreme bass of the piano. Uh, if we zoom in to the uh, relation between the pedestal and the hammer, you can see that as I move the key height up and down, it does change the relation between the two. So this is why it's really critical to come up with where your key height is going to be and then set your Miracle Mod on there. So that way, as we go across the piano, they'll all be in the same location relative to the hammer pedestal. Uh, I'm sorry, the hammer cam. We first want to observe stop lock position before locating our bump. And stop lock position is when the back of the hammer cam meets the back of the pedestal. So that right there is our stop lock position. In placing our bump, we don't want to interfere with that. We don't want to influence the hammer up higher. And also, we don't want the bump to be too far away from the cam. We basically want to hold the key in stop lock and then position our bump so that it's just touching the hammer cam, but again, without pushing it up further. So about right there is where we're going to want to put our bump. What we'll then do is just mark the area and we'll glue it in and test. Okay, we're now going to repeat this process on low A of the piano.
Now that we have our low A and high C on this piano set to proper height and proper placement of the pedestal bump, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the action rail. Uh, then we're going to take a straight edge, and now we would assume at this point that all of the felts have been removed and all your pedestals cleaned. Uh, take your straight edge and mark from the first, or actually in this case we might want to call this the last bump, all the way down to your low A, in this case, your first bump, and mark a straight line across all pedestals. And that's going to show us where the bump needs to be on every pedestal. At this point, you're going to want to determine whether or not to replace your damper arms. What we're looking for right here is a decent amount of resistance from each damper, and also a level of consistency too. Now, if you've determined that you don't want to replace your damper arms, a few things you can do when you come across, say, something like this one, uh, we can tell by the feel and the look of it that it wouldn't dampen the note properly. Um, we can usually just tweak it just a little bit by pulling it towards the uh, base where it's screwed into the action rail. And what I'm doing here is just kind of leveling it with the adjacent damper arms. By doing that, we do have an increase in resistance. Um, it has brought it back a little bit. Um, if it still seems like it's a little on the weak side, you can remove the screw and do what we call the reverse bend, uh, which we just take from this surface to here and just bend it around a quart size paint can. Um, reverse, so as if we were to take the bridle strap off and overextend it back towards us or up um, around that quart size paint can and then reinstall and you'll get more resistance. Um, and that can possibly save your dampers. Um, the other consideration with uh, old dampers like this is that they sometimes display an excessive amount of flex from the bridle strap to the um, damper felt. Now we could demonstrate that up here, uh, especially after a Miracle Mod is in. Uh, there's much more uh, acceleration on a heavy stroke. And what we can see happening here is an excessive flex or bounce of the damper felt and that can be a concern especially in the bass section of the piano where the tines are much larger um, upon that heavy stroke this flexing can actually allow the damper felt to come back up and mute the note and that, that kind of inhibits the bark of the piano so you may at this point decide to put new dampers in. Um, and again, if you decide not to, there's those tricks and there's also a crimp that you can add, almost like a V shape. Uh, and you just sort of bend, think of a small kind of a uh, channel right in there that can help stiffen this section to uh, prevent it from over flexing on those heavy strokes. Here we have some pointers on how to install the Vintage Vibe damper kit. Uh, we're going to start with this Rhodes over here that has original dampers on it. And you basically want to take a nice fresh blade. I usually pull on the original damper and just get right underneath it, kind of a little sawing motion, and take the old dampers right off. About like that is sufficient. You can have it about that clean. Uh, something like this, for instance, we would definitely want to go over that and clean it up a little more before gluing new dampers on. Now, when installing your new dampers, uh, I like to start at the treble and work my way down toward the base. Uh, depending on where your strike line is, you may want to bend the treble dampers down slightly so that way the damper felt clears the pickup. You could do that 
kind of just by taking the pliers here, a pair of pliers, and just sort of bending down a little bit. And that little flat tab there, that's where we're going to put our treble damper. And we take our glue here, get a small bead on that glue to appear, just about like that, make sure it's not an air bubble, and just kind of cut it off, just like that. And then we go ahead with our treble damper, and it's going to go this way, so that way it's shorter rather than flipping it. And it doesn't matter if we orient it this way or that way. If the glue starts to fall as it is, we'll just catch it, and then just sort of bend it up, and make sure it's nice and tight on there. And there we go, is our first damper. Next in line is the mid-range dampers. So we'll just, for the sake of the video, pretend we put our treble dampers all the way on and move down the piano. Uh, one thing we really want to mention about the mid-range and the pre-mid-range dampers, and this goes for the bass dampers as well. Um, if you look closely, I'll put this damper right on the edge of that key there. There's a grain to this damper. Now, if we look at the felt, it actually has a grain. We can see it moving horizontally, whereas if I were to put it this way, now we can see that the damper is vertical. The grain of it is vertical. We want to orient the uh, felt with the grain horizontal. Uh, this is going to give you a nice stop on the note, but without a kind of a chirping sound. Um, if you put the damper this way, it's a little harder to the tine, and you'll get a chirp on release. So, in the same fashion, we'll just do one right here. We know a mid's going to end up in this area. Uh, there's 21 trebles, so we would go 21 down, and then we would start with our mid-range dampers. And again, we get our bead of glue. Now, see there's an air bubble in there, so just make sure you have enough glue. And just, again, put a small bead on there. And with our damper grain positioned correctly, what I like to do is kind of line up with the edge of the damper and just sort of push this way. This way, most of your excess glue is going to end up in front of the damper felt. And then just sort of clean off the excess there. And we could go ahead and do a pre-mid damper. And again, we're going to observe the grain on the damper. And we want to see that grain is horizontal. So about in this section, we'd encounter some pre-mid dampers. As the damper gets a little larger, the felt, you can put a little more glue on there. And again, just sort of roll it forward and give it a good good press. You don't want to press all the glue out of there, but make sure it's nice and tight on the aluminum damper arm. And then finally we come to the base dampers. And again, our grain is going to be horizontal. Okay, we'll do this one at the end here. Nice bead of glue. And there goes the damper right on there. We just wanted to point out that our damper kit comes uh, pre-numbered. So when you start at your treble, you'll use all 21. And that's going to bring you right about to uh, this particular note here, which is numbered 60 on this particular piano. Uh, then you have your mid-range, which is 22 of those, is going to bring you roughly to about B-flat. Uh, then our pre-mid, 15 of those, and then finally your bass dampers. Okay, earlier when we were putting the treble dampers on, um, I showed you how you can do a little bend in the damper arm to allow clearance for the felt to get around the pickup. Uh, here's our bend in the damper arm, the felt on top of it, and we'll just lower the harp here and
kind of demonstrate to you how see how the damper felt is able to get right around the pickup without binding on it so we have a nice positive damper there um, on the base side of things I want to show you a little way we can possibly optimize or at least get the dampers to really fall out of the way in the swinging time um, with our key depressed if we bend this tine down, kind of mimicking the swing of it, we can actually see that the tine isn't quite parallel with the angle of that damper there. So in other words, on a hard blow, this tine is actually going to get damped by the damper, right in that corner there. Now the way we can get around that, I usually just take my fingernail in here, grab the damper, and just sort of bend up right in that area and now we'll bend back down to get to the proper height okay now upon a heavy blow it's a little bit more in line with the angle of the time so it actually keeps that damper out of the way upon hard blows another point we want to make about installing the dampers is what we refer to as lost motion um, a road's action is very bouncy. Um, you can probably see those hammers bouncing up and down in there upon blowing the tines. Um, if your dampers don't have any lost motion, then that bounce is going to translate into the tone of the piano. And you'll hear it, instead of stopping dead, it's kind of got almost like a, like a delay effect to it. So we like to put into the dampers about an eighth inch of lost motion. So we'll bring the camera up here and demonstrate what that is. See if I lift this tine up we can see a, the damper raised by about uh, let's say an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch or so. Uh, too much lost motion and you won't get a nice open tone. Uh, too little lost motion and you'll hear that bounce. So you'll come across a happy medium for your piano, generally about that measurement though. And so as we press the keys down slightly, this damper is still engaged to the tine and then finally starts to uh, fall away. And that again is just going to absorb some of that bouncing tone. Okay, so just to go over the damper adjustment slightly, um, what we want to do is you'd set up maybe one note in your bass, one in your mid-range, one in the treble, and ideally we want to see a fairly straight line across the dampers. Uh, to get the most out of your adjustments, you'll want to bend just ahead of where the bridle strap is fastened to the damper arm. So if we needed to lower this, we'd bend it kind of like that, and our bend is sort of right just ahead of that bridle strap area. Uh, if we needed to bring this back up then, again, the same applies. And there we are, just roughly about back where we started from. Um, another note about lost motion is you want to have that lost motion across the entire piano. Uh, you may need to back off of lost motion or have less of it in the bass section. Um, that's where things are you know, so much larger. There's a larger swing of the tines, so you really have to optimize and be able to get that damper as far out of the way as possible. Uh, but you can see across the board here, if we lift the harp slightly, you can see the dampers are still engaged up until a certain point and then finally lift off. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, you'll also know you have a decent amount of lost motion if you observe the bridle straps. They should have a little slack in them. Good. We're going to go ahead and install these hammers into the piano right now. Um, I like to start from the treble end because that's the hardest hammer and thus takes the longest amount of time for the glue to cure. So we're going to use uh, all the hammers in each bag. Starting from the treble, we'll use all of the wood tip hammers, then all of the white hammers, then all yellow, green, followed by red. Uh, just be sure that the hammer tips are orientated properly onto the hammer and that the back of the tip is sitting flush with the lip of the hammer butt. We're removing the original hammer tips from the hammers. Uh, some of them will just come right off. Some of you might need help with a pair of channel locks or a blade. 
uh, where they're going to remove all traces of adhesive from the hammer. Uh, we're looking for a nice crisp angle between the uh, hammer mounting surface and the inside of the lip and we're going to remove all trace of adhesive uh, to ensure a good bond with the new hammer. Uh, we also want to just make sure that every hammer tip rests nice and flat on the cleaned uh, hammer butt. We're going to go ahead with new grommets on this particular piano and what I'm going to do here is just pre-assemble some uh, screws and washers and grommets. For the sake of neatness you uh, may want to just observe your washers and there's a smooth side and then more of a raw side and for this we like to have the smooth side showing and it doesn't really matter but uh, you'll get a more consistent look with your finished product if you put all the finished sides up. We're going to go ahead and replace these grommets and the screws. Uh, if you're happy with your tone bars and you're not going to do a full restoration of the harp, um, you can possibly get away with doing one row at a time and then it kind of prevents you from having to take the whole harp apart. Uh, in this case then we would start with the forward screw and loosen that and you can go across the whole width of the uh, harp or you can do sections. Uh, in some cases you'll be able to just lift these right out and then drop the new one right in. It looks like in this case we might not be able to get away with that. Okay, see that one came out as one piece. Uh, certain years and depending on the conditions in which they were stored, uh, sometimes the grommets will break as in number one there. Uh, but most of the time you can get them right out. Uh, in this case what we would then do is go ahead and drop the new ones in and just thread the screw in just to where it's grabbing so that way we can loosen the rear and we don't um, we don't risk the long end of the tone bar hitting into the pickup and damaging the uh, pickup wiring. Uh, in this case, these grommets are fairly dried out and uh, it looks like we're actually going to have a lot of cleaning to do. Thank you. 